Hi everybody, Jeff, your executive gardener here. Welcome to another episode. So, it is a beautiful day here. It is October 8th, or October 7th, I believe, here in Houston, Texas. And October is one of the best gardening months of the year here in South Texas. And I'll tell you why. This episode is going to be a little bit scientific. So, get your bio, uh, biology minds on. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But, let me show you my... Uh, hygrometer here so take a look at this hopefully you can see it so that says 50 degrees humidity okay and it's in celsius i think it says 22.8 degrees celsius which is about uh 70 degrees fahrenheit okay so i haven't figured out how to turn it from celsius to fahrenheit but uh, it is about 70 degrees fahrenheit so that is ideal gardening conditions uh which is not what we typically have here in houston texas or if you live in any other part of the southeastern United States, Alabama, Mississippi, New Orleans, South Carolina, Florida, um, it's difficult to garden most most uh, most times of the year, and it's because of the high heat and high humidity. So we're going to talk about the impact of humidity, in particular high humidity combined with high heat, and the impact and what it does to your vegetable garden. Okay. So to think about this, I have an ongoing joke. So this time of the year is called California, Southern California, all times of the year. So um, I have a friendly jab with friendly gardeners uh, around uh, around the country, and some of them live in Southern California. And I will tell you, it's not quite like fishing in a stocked pond, but gardening is significantly easier in Southern California. Once you now, it's not totally easy, but it's easier than gardening in the Southeastern United States because of humidity, high humidity, and high heat. So we're gonna talk about that today, okay? But, so if I had, in other words, if I had my choice, I'd rather garden in San Diego uh, all year round than Houston all year round, no question about it. It'd be a lot easier, and you don't have the issues to deal with. So let's talk about the impact of high humidity and combined with high heat on plants. So let's first talk about, think about humans, okay? So any of you, whether you've lived in a humid part of the world or in this country it would be referred to as the southeastern United States or Texas or Florida okay which is referred to as I guess the south in the United States so have you ever tried to go out and jog on a day where it's 95 degrees which is most of the year most of the summer and spring up through September in Florida and Texas and 90 to 100 percent humidity okay you know what it feels like, right? So what happens, if, uh, essentially, because of the high humidity, you take 95 degrees and you add a factor to that, which we call heat index. So that 95 degrees actually feels like 125, 130 degrees uh, to your body. And why is that? So the body has a process called perspiration, okay? It's how we, our bodies are equipped biologically to cool itself down okay so we drink liquids in and through exercise or walking or just naturally in general your body releases liquids a number of ways obviously you can urinate but the other way you release it quickly to cool your body down when you're exercising is perspiration so your pores you sweat so you know if you've ever jogged in Arizona where the humidity is 10 percent or 15 percent the water from your skin, when you sweat, evaporates by vapor into the air. That's the natural way the body cools itself down. So 95 degrees in Arizona, where it's dry, not humid, is actually 95 degrees, okay? Heat index. But if you're in Houston, Texas, 95 degrees feels like 130 because the humidity creates a multiple. And that creates all types of issues. So for us to perspire, for us to release water from our pores, and I'm going to get to the plant part of this in a second, but it's very similar. For us to release water from our pores, the air surrounding our pores, okay, has to be less humid than what's being released from our pores, okay, because if vapor from your skin evaporates into the air, there's nowhere for it to evaporate if the air surrounding your face or your body is 100% humidity, okay? So what happens in that situation, as you know, is it becomes difficult to sweat, you became drenched, you became soaked, and because it's difficult to sweat, 
and water doesn't evaporate quick enough, your body goes into sometimes uh, uh, heat stroke or shock. And your body can actually cook itself because your organs aren't going to function properly because your body is not able to naturally cool down, okay? So that, that's what happens to humans when we can't perspire, our pores can't release and evaporate vapor into the air because the air surrounding us is already 100% humidity. Now, the same thing happens in plants. So if you're gardening in the southern United States, the southeastern United States, where it is intense humidity and intense heat, the same process happens in plants. And I'm going to give you a close-up of a tomato plant and diagram and talking about the science of it, which is called transpiration, not perspiration, and how plants uh, in high humid, high heat environments will never do as well as plants in a climate like San Diego or Southern California, where the humidity is low and the temperature is always delightful, 70 to 80 degrees. So let me give you a close up. I wanted to give you a background so you know how it, when, you, when I tell you about the plant transpiration part, you can compare it to the human perspiration part and hopefully it will change the way you garden. Let me give you a close up of my plant. Okay, here we are. We're going to give an example of transpiration in a plant. And this is the equivalent of perspiration in humans, okay? So let's start with the first part. So uh, here you have a tomato plant. You have the roots, obviously, which are down here. You have the stem, which goes up the plant. You have the branches, and you have the leaves. On the bottom side, the leaves are, are what's called uh, stomata. And they're, it's plural for stoma. So stoma are like our pores. That's how stoma or tiny pores or holes on the bottom sides of the leaves, and that's how plants release its water molecules in the form of vapor into the air, okay? So that's, that, that's the basic. And water comes up from the roots, okay? It's called osmosis, so it's the process of how the roots absorb water, and negative water pressure in the roots causes suction from the roots. It drinks up the water up through the stem, through the branches, and it gets it eventually to the extremities, to the leaves, and it's released in vapor through the stoma, okay? And what happens is uh, because water is constantly being sucked up by the roots, up the stem, into the branches, into the extremities, and out the stoma, that's a natural process called transpiration. And under a normal environment where it's 70 degrees heat, and 70, excuse me, 50% humidity, and desired humidity for gardening is between 40 and 60% humidity. 40 and 60% humidity is ideal. 100%, 90%, like it is in Houston, Texas, and Florida, in most parts of the year, is certainly less than ideal. And when it's 95 degrees and 95% humidity, which is a heat index between 120 and 130 degrees, let me tell you what problems it causes in this plant, okay? It causes all types of problems, just like it does with humans when we can't perspire. We get heat stroke, organ failure, all types of bad things, okay? So when the stoma can't release water molecules out into the environment because the air surrounding it is saturated with moisture, 100% humidity, there's nowhere for the water to be released to, okay, through the stoma. So it can't vaporize or evaporate into the air. So what happens is that that actually slows the process down in the plant of getting nutrients from its roots up its stem to its branches to its leaves through its veins and capillaries. So when that happens, <clears throat> no nutrients, when, when the plant, number one, can't cool itself down, number two, no nutrients are being pulled up uh, from the roots to the plant. So it causes your plant uh, to not only be hot, but get fungal disease, and lack of growth because it's not sucking up nutrients uh, through that negative water, excuse me, through the uh, cohesion process that I described. And your plant cooks itself and uh, the fruit that you'll grow will be undernourished because the natural process isn't working. So this plant looks ideal. This is a tomato plant. This is how it should look. Um, but again, it's 50% humidity right now and 70 degrees out. I guarantee you, if I grow this same plant in July in Houston, it won't look like this. It'll be covered with uh, fungal disease. It'll be stunted in growth and it will look horrible. Okay, so that is the impact. So when people ask me 
about growing uh, in Houston, Texas, or in South Texas, where I live and what I know, it's one of the hardest places to grow in the United States. You have to basically either buy plants that are, high, that are bred, seeds that are bred, to take very hot environments, or you have to wait till the spring or the fall because uh, the high heat and the high heat humidity, excuse me, high, high humidity, which creates a high heat index, makes it very difficult to grow most plants in this part of the year. So my other recommendation is to move to Southern California, where you can pretty much garden all time of the year. Again, it's not like fishing in a stock pond, but it's much easier than it is growing in the southeastern United States, okay? And um, so that, that's the process. So this plant looks very good. Now let me also talk about one more thing. So let's talk about the opposite, which is true. So uh, I, I explained the, the situation, the problems that are caused when you have high heat and high humidity, okay? The plant can't breathe, it can't, it can't uh, transpire, and you have all types of issues, okay? So again, remember, transpiration is the process for which the plant sucks up nutrients and water through the roots, through its veins, and it releases it through its stoma. Now what happens in the opposite situation? Let's say you live in Phoenix, and it's 100 degrees and 10% humidity. Well, that's just the opposite. So what happens in that situation, just like humans, is that the evaporation through the stoma is very fast. So what that means that you have to do, the transpiration process is fast. You have to constantly water your plants and constantly give them fertilizer because transpiration is happening so quickly because water is being evaporated from the stoma very quickly. So if you live in high humid, excuse me, high heat, low humid, that's what has to occur. Just the opposite if you live in high humid, high heat. So both create its issues. So I'm gonna show you an example of what my plants look like all throughout my garden this time of year because the weather is ideal. 70 degrees and 70% humidity. Um, so let me get behind the camera and show you how this works. So here is a uh, container full of cucumber plants. Now, look at this. This is, again, I promise you if I filmed this in July or August, your plants would not look like this if you lived in the southeastern United States, okay? The impact of low humidity allows the stoma to release uh, vapor into the air and the plants to breathe and transpire correctly. Beautiful, okay? This is what it should look like. So, again, if you live in southeastern United States or Texas, don't beat yourself up. We all face this. Houston, Texas, Florida is a very difficult place to, to garden because of high humidity and high heat, okay? So this is what, so my, my, my solution to you is start gardening in October. Start gardening in February or March. This is how they'll look like. Let's take a look at some tomato plants, okay? Get out of my shadow here. Tomato plants all looking very good, very green. Excellent. Let's look at the, the tower garden. You have some, some kale, some lettuce starting to grow. Uh, again, it would not look like this in July. Um, I'll give you a view of my tomato garden, and we'll take a look at that, and then we'll end the video. So this is a cherry tomato plant in a bag. Look at this growth again, okay? Again, the growth of a plant will be stunted by high humidity, okay? The plant can't properly transpire. Um, osmosis does not happen in the roots. And you'll notice here you see very little to no fungal disease, okay? That's because of low humidity and 70 degree temperatures, up to 80, okay? Uh, here's a pepper plant that's doing very well as well. Look how green it is, lush. Uh, this is actually a second um, coming of fruit on the Jimmy Nardello pepper plant. So typically the second um, fruit is not as big as the first, but nevertheless doing very well loaded with fruit, okay? And I'm also growing some, um, some other plants, uh, cherry tomato plants, you'll see there, okay? Uh, here's another tomato plant, again, flowering beautifully. When you have high humidity, you typically don't get as many flowers, which turns into fruit, uh, which you eat, okay? So, uh, in general, you'll see here, I'm um, growing tons of stuff here in October, and I know you folks up in Minnesota or other parts of the country are very jealous, but you have your time in the summer we do not grow here in the summer in houston texas because of the reasons i explained below i'm growing beans here again all doing very well very little fungal disease another small plant another one of my favorite black semen plant 
um, uh, broccoli, 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 broccoli. So um, let me end this video. Um, and I hope this has been helpful. I wanted to make sure folks understood and I, uh, that it is very difficult to garden if you live in South Texas or the southeastern United States because of the humidity. Just as humans do not do well outside in high heat and high humidity, nor do plants, and they never will, unless they're a certain type of plant that thrives in that or it's manufactured or uh, engineered to do well in heat environments. And I know many of you do not like genetically modified uh, seeds. So um, that's it. Uh, this is the update. I hope it's been helpful for you. And again, I guess the lesson learned is that if you live in the southeast or southern parts of the country, in the United States, um, garden, focus on gardening in the fall, September, October, and in the spring, you know, early March and so forth. But as it relates to trying to garden and do anything between um, late May and early September, as they say, shut it down. Uh, you're just not going to do well. You're, you're, uh, unless you have an air conditioned greenhouse, of course. Uh, so that's it. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and the explanation of the transpiration process within plants and why certain parts of the country do not, it's very difficult to garden in high humidity and high heat environments. Uh, until next time, take care. Bye.